Eco Solutions, in association with Suzlon, powering a greener tomorrow. Suarez and a very warm welcome to the rooftop of CNN's European headquarters where this month we're all about renewable energy on Eco Solutions. Keeping the lights on is something we take for granted. Most of us can push a switch and the electricity flows without even thinking about it. Now, as we look for cleaner as well as greener ways to produce energy, the big question is how do we create a continuous, reliable supply? Fossil fuels, as you know, are dependable. But in terms of renewables, what do we do when the sun doesn't shine like today? In fact, the wind doesn't blow. Well, in May of this year, Portugal ran for four and a half days entirely on renewable electricity. Goes to show you, it can be done. So we went to find out more. As the sun rose on Saturday the 7th of May of 2016, Portugal's energy future shone brighter than ever. For the next 107 hours, clean, renewable energy generated 100% of the country's electricity demand. In the beginning, they say, no, they are not reliable, they are expensive, they are not controllable, all these things, and we have overcome all of these. Weather conditions were favorable, and the lower weekend demand helped too. With no fossil fuels or nuclear power, the pursuit of clean energy has had support as well as investment. One of the keys to a continuous supply of renewable energy is the ability to store it in hydroelectric dams like this one. We take advantage of the surplus of energy that's in the grid, mainly coming from wind farms and we uh, use that electricity to pump water from the downstream level into the upstream level. This method is called pump hydro. Alkiva is one of 83 dams which can generate 6,000 megawatts of electricity per hour. Peak consumption in the whole of Portugal is around 8,000 megawatts per hour. It took two minutes and a half from the moment that they give the start order until the moment it starts producing electricity. We are now inside the hydropower plant. Below my feet, there is the alternator. The alternator is the part where we transform the me mechanical rotational movement into electricity through electromagnetic fields. The water just runs through the tunnels, reaches the turbine, and then we transform that rotational movement into electricity that goes into the national grid. After huge investments in wind and hydro, Portugal is now looking to capitalize on another abundant clean energy source, the sun. Because we are the, the European country that has the highest number of sunshine hours, solar is really the, the, a source that we have to, to grow. Malaysia is one of the hottest spots in Portugal. Since 2008, these large solar panels have tracked the sun, contributing 46 megawatts per hour to the Portuguese energy mix. We need to invest in, in hydro and wind uh, during the winter time, but we have to have the, the counterbalance with solar uh, during the summer time. And we're far from that objective. It's not just large-scale solar which is being explored. Copernico is Portugal's first solar cooperative. The model is simple. Hire a roof space, install panels, and bask in the profits of selling clean energy to the grid. Because this is not about just about producing renewable energy. People are investing in something that they consider sustainable. 
In Denmark, 80% of wind power is owned by citizens through cooperatives. So it is a very viable model and we do believe that is a substantial part of the future. Now the challenge is to meet long-term targets. 60% of all electricity should be renewable by 2020 and 80% by 2030, according to APREM. That means regularly managing the balance between wind, solar and hydro. In, in a country like Portugal, there is sun every day. There is wind almost every day. There is uh, rain more in the winter than in the summer, but there's water that we can manage. And I believe that by 2040, we'll be able to have 100% uh, uh, renewable electricity. We need to have uh, an international grid that enables us to export this energy and to sell it whenever we, we have an access. The weather is unpredictable, so they say, but with smarter grids and improved storage systems, the reliability of renewables is no longer called into question. The next step for Portugal is Europe's export potential. Almost five days straight running on just renewable electricity. It really is nice to see Portugal, my homeland, of course, doing so well. And when we come back, I'll be joined here by Michael Taylor from the International Renewable Energy Agency about a future with more clean energy in the mix. And the moment you've all been waiting for this month's e-conundrum. Have you ever thought about how you can use renewable energy at home? Welcome back to CNN's European headquarters. I'm Isa Suarez and you are watching Eco Solutions. I'm joined now by Michael Taylor from the International Renewable Energy Agency. Michael, talk to us about the importance of storage. At the moment, with most of the energy storage in the system, around 99% is pumped hydro storage. Very traditional technology, very cost effective, but in the future, as we have a higher share of variable renewables, this can be used to take the solar energy that we have during midday, store it for when the sun and the wind aren't shining. So what we're looking at around the world is what a technology, storage technologies that can be deployed more easily and more rapidly in different circumstances. What's the Middle East doing? What's happening in the Middle East at the moment is very exciting because they've realized the economic opportunities around solar PV and concentrating solar power. Now they can use concentrating solar power with molten salt storage and for instance Dubai and the United Arab Emirates they are doing this. Uh, but there are also other opportunities, uh, more mundane technologies that can, can come back a bit into vogue. So you can use, if you have a lot of solar at, in the midday, you can use that to create ice and ice storage to provide cooling in the evening. Many will say you're only as good as your grid. How important is that? What does the perfect grid look like to you? That grid needs to be more flexible. It's a little bit like uh, if you think of today's grid as a monologue, you know, mm -hmm. central power stations are sending out electricity to consumers and it's a one-way conversation. The grid of the future is going to be more of a conversation. So there'll be a suburb at the end of a distribution network that's actually sending solar PV back into the system. There might be a region in one part of the country which normally sends onshore wind to the rest of the country but sometimes will need to receive. More back and forth really within and More grid. back and forth. How many countries, companies would you say already employ these perfect grids where that conversation is already flowing? Well, I think we're, s in many respects, we're really at the beginning of this transition. So I think there's a lot of learning by doing happening at the moment. States like California and the United States with their very ambitious 50% uh, renewable portfolio standard, they're all thinking very hard about how this grid will look, how it will operate, and what makes it a success with these high shares of variable renewable. Michael Taylor, a pleasure. Thank you very much. And that does it for us here on Eco Solutions from a sunny London here at CNN. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you next month.